me on an amazing 3D journey through Thailand. Thais are renowned for their compassion, especially when it comes to nature, and every year they release baby turtles back into the sea as a way of showing their appreciation and as a way of giving back to nature. Now as we begin our journey, make sure you remember to put on your 3D glasses every time you see the 3D symbol showing. Thailand is a unique Asian country, attracting vast numbers of tourists from all over the world. Eight million visitors come each year, searching for exotic civilizations and perfect beaches. Thailand is a spectacular country with a colorful existence, many places of interest and a culture that is centuries old. The three main religions here are Buddhism, Islam and Christianity. Join me in exploring the mystical Temple of Siam, a thousand year old relic of humanity that has survived to this day. The dramatic scenery of the South has been sought out by many, including none other than James Bond. This area provided a fantastic backdrop for his continuing pursuit of the bad guys. On the island of Phi Phi, I discovered a beautiful diving area, an underwater landscape of incredible diversity. Thailand lies in the heart of Southeast Asia, with the Indian Ocean on the west and the China Sea on the east coast. Our journey begins in Bangkok and will take us deep into Thailand's rainforest, as far as Lampang. Close to 100 years ago, there were still around 200,000 elephants living in Siam's forest. Today, the animals are unfortunately in danger of becoming extinct. Lumberjacks and farmers have trained these intelligent animals to work for them in the jungle. We pay a visit to the elephant conservation camp, not far from Lampang, a hospital for old and injured animals. Dr. Feng is a vet who works with the elephants. He treats many animals that are injured while working in the forests. The badly injured female elephant Tomba is today's patient. So what happened to this elephant? A few months ago at the Burmese border, she stepped on a landmine. Her front leg was badly injured. And what do you do here at this hospital? This hospital is supported by the Thai Animal Protection Society. It cares and protects for endangered species. This female elephant Tomba has grown accustomed to her daily procedure. The bandages on her damaged leg need to be changed regularly. Four centimeters of thick calloused skin cover an elephant's foot. They must be able to hold a weight of up to three tons, and this protective hard skin is what's missing from Tumba's foot. The wound needs to be cleaned out each day, disinfected, and treated with a special ointment. Oh, thank you. Around here? Yes, around, like a spare. Okay, lots. After having her bandages changed, she's ready for another day of rest and recuperation.
The life expectancy of an elephant is around 60 years. Dr. Fang estimates Tomba to be around 40 years old. Every evening, a hospital orderly takes her into the forest. Tomba needs to learn how to walk again. My journey advances on the back of an elephant as I travel southwards through the dense forests of the National Park of Ethanon. Two and a half hours on the back of an elephant can be quite exhaustive, but it's the only form of transport available. The sizable village lies on the Manam Peng River, which flows as far as Bangkok. I continue my journey in a traditional rice boat. In the past, these boats transported tons of rice into the harbours of commercial towns. However, these boats made of teak are now only used for excursions and special occasions. Along the way, we pass Sukhothai and Ayutthaya, two ruined cities, once majestic constructions that were covered in pure gold. Sukhothai, literally translated, means dawn of blessedness. This ruined town was known as the Cradle of Thailand. Recording of the kingdom's history began some 750 years ago. Sukhothai is known as one of the most sought-after fortresses. In the 12th century, the clever battle strategies of the Thais brought them an undeniable victory over the Burmese. As a symbol of their power, the Khmer secretly dislodged the head from a sacred statue. The head from this statue of Buddha was never replaced. It stands today as a silent witness to the bloodthirsty war between the Khmer and Thailand. We proceed with our journey in present-day Thailand. Around 400 kilometers further southwest and next to the capital city, Bangkok, we arrive at one of the most well-known markets in the country, the Demon Saduk. Bangkok was once known as the floating city. You could reach almost anywhere by boat. These canals are known as Klongs and stretch for hundreds of miles right up into the far north of Thailand. But for now, let's try some of the delights of this wonderful floating market. The local farmers bring their fresh goods as early as 4 a.m. to the market. The wooden boats are both shopping vessels and floating stores, displaying their produce for customers. Here you'll find everything you need from exotic spices and delicacies to unusual trinkets and souvenirs. menu consists of soup, a curry dish with spices and dips, coriander, ginger, lemongrass and the yam yam root and many more spices give Thai food its unique aromatic taste. This is a lemongrass vegetable soup with ravioli. It's a little spicy but it tastes delightful. the Klongs, the water lanes of the Chao Phraya River, we travel by taxi boat into the centre of the capital city. Bangkok at its inception was given the longest name in the history of the world. 
it had 100 letters. The Chinese market lies in the heart of Bangkok and is definitely worth a visit. I'm trying to guess what this could be. I think it's some kind of mussel and it smells very fresh. I think I'll have to try one. Well, it's definitely got a distinctive taste. Do you eat these? You do eat these? Oh, no. Really? <laughs> what are these for? Are they religious? For uh, respect for Buddha? Flowers are sacred in Thailand. Everyone has a jasmine wreath in their car or hanging on the front door of their house. The perfume of the flowers drives away evil. This is an integral part of Buddhism. A few twists and turns later and we arrive in the Chinese quarter, where we can visit the famous marble temple. The design of this 600-year-old construction was interestingly influenced from Western architecture. The Chinese temple is, apart from the gold-decorated roof, entirely constructed from marble. Six o'clock in the morning. The monks accept donations of food for themselves and for others in need. Apart from their uniforms, monks have no other possessions. They are dependent on the generosity of their fellow man. I've brought them an offering of a wholesome meal, vegetable curry with rice. The monks are only allowed to eat until midday. The rest of the day is spent meditating and praying. The Grand Palace counts as one of Thailand's largest temple constructions. Here is where the institutional monarchy sits today. The Royal Palace is both the parliament and a sacred sanctuary. The king has lived with his subjects like this for the past 25 years. These are known as the Canaras, a creature that is half human, half bird. In Thai mythology, they are a symbol of all that is gentle and good. Aside from all the gold and splendour, Thailand has also a rich and diverse landscape. 800 kilometres south of Bangkok lies Pang Na Bay, the Bay of the Stone Island. Travelling in a long-tailed boat, only 20 minutes from Pang Na, we arrive in Khao Tapu, known as the James Bond Island. Only a few nautical miles west of here lies the largest mangrove forest. Around 50% of southern Thailand is covered in these mangroves, an extremely important biotype for this area. 
An extraordinary variety of plant and animal life along the coast have made these riverbanks and swamps their home. Many endangered species have found a safe habitat here. The dense forests protect them from the rising water levels and from erosion. Herbal medicine can be extracted from the mangrove trees. Nam Nog, a root juice, is known for its treatment of lumbago. The National Park of Panga Bay is a wonder of nature. The Thais believe that a dragon sleeps under the surface of the water. The humped spikes of the mountains symbolize the dragon's pronged back. And now onto Koh Panyi, a Muslim village entirely built on stilts in the middle of the ocean. Here, 200 years ago, the first silted huts were erected, and since then a whole village has arisen from the water. Mina, the niece of the village elder, waits for me on the jetty. She is 32 years old and a strict Muslim. She's lived her whole life in this fishing village. When the call rings out for prayer, it is meant only for the men. Women aren't permitted in the mosque. Approximately 200 families live on Kopanyi. Mina tells me that everyone here is happy and content. The village is almost entirely independent from the outside world. The people here have almost everything they need. A school, a hospital, a mosque, and even a cemetery. For three years, they've had electricity. However, they rely on fresh water to be delivered. This is the image of Thailand we all know. Beautiful beaches with that South Seas feeling. Deserted bays and crystal clear waters. A paradise. An ideal location to get away from it all, to lie in the sun and to simply enjoy the peace and quiet. of lying in the sun, you can hire a canoe and explore the fishing harbour of Krabi. Somewhere here lies the temple of the sacred sea princess. The surrounding cliffs are 250 metres high perfect for the adventurous climber. In this entrance to the cliff lies the temple of the sacred sea princess. The princess cave was once a place of sanctuary where offerings were brought by fishermen. In return they were guaranteed a good catch. However today the once sacred altar has become more of a tourist site. We set course for Koh Phi Phi. 
During the filming of the Leonardo DiCaprio film The Beach, this area and its landscape suffered from the massive influx of people. Eventually, the area was closed to tourists for three years in order for the island to regenerate. These days, the island is back to its original glory. The Thai Environmental Authority has protected the waters of Pipi. Pee Pee. The underwater world remains beautifully intact. With water temperatures at a very pleasant 25 degrees, you can be sure to enjoy every part of this great diving location. This assortment of soft and hard coral, as well as thousands of species of fish, live in these waters. Even at a shallow depth of 10 to 15 meters, the sea life is very colorful. It's important to try and avoid touching the sea life. Although there are lots of tempting things to touch, it's always better not to. Some corals are affected by our skin and some are poisonous to the touch. Unfortunately, I've accidentally knocked a sea urchin during my dive. The needles have bored themselves deep into my foot and it's incredibly painful. The last destination of my journey lies deep in the almost impenetrable mountain ranges of the north. Here lives the last of Thailand's traditionally primitive tribes. The three biggest tribes are the Akka, Karen and the Mien. For hundreds of years they were displaced from Burma and Tibet. And here in Thailand, roughly translated the country of the free, these half nomadic people have found a new home. The inhabitants of the Akha village were very welcoming as I arrived. As it's traditional for visitors to bring gifts, I brought some toys and useful items for the villagers. <laughs> Are these earrings for anything special in particular? Well, one can see straight away if a woman is married or if she is available to be courted. Only a few years ago, the mountain people here were still making a living from the cultivation of opium. They took care of the fields and made their money by selling the crops. Ten years ago, the government made the harvesting of opium illegal. The existence of entire tribes was on the brink of collapse. More recently, tourism has become their main source of income. The Aka allow the traveller a glimpse into their way of life.
The village elder told me that they show only a small piece of their culture. The true secrets remain inaccessible to outsiders. Thank you. Well, I'm about to indulge in this delicious feast. I hope you've enjoyed Thailand as much as I have. Join me for my next 3D adventure.